Chromium is going to help you with uh, multiple things, but if we want to summarize what the Chromium does, it's just going to help pigs to utilize the glucose that they are uh, producing. So it's going to help the glucose uptake in, in the cell, and that's going to help the pigs to use better the energy that they are consuming. Because to begin with, the when pigs are in a uh, stress, caloric stress, they are going through a lot of metabolic changes and chromium is going to help them to use the glucose that they are producing despite all the metabolic challenges that they are going through because of the heat stress. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Roman Moreno, a swine nutritionist at Seaboard Foods. So Roman, you've been on here a few times before already. Um, it's been a little bit though, so just a brief reminder for the audience. Would you mind giving a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, just a, a quick uh, introduction to, to my myself. Uh, I'm originally from Mexico. I grew up in a small um, farm production system. My dad had some dairy cows, some pigs. Um, so uh, I started really early on my career working with animals. Um, got my bachelor's degree in animal science in Mexico, uh, master's in rumen and nutrition in Mexico as well. Then I moved to the United States, had the opportunity to work for Seaboard Foods um, as a farm manager for a couple of years. Then I got the opportunity to go back to grad school, went to the University of Nebraska, got my PhD in, in uh, monogastric nutrition, specifically pigs. Uh, after that, I worked in Illinois uh, for a commercial feed company for a couple of years. And then I had the opportunity to come back here uh, to Seaboard again back in uh, 2012, 2013. And I have been uh, working in the nutrition department for about 12 years now and uh, has been fun. Kemen calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. So I want to talk to you about one thing that's um, pretty um, relevant right now. So we're in the heat of the summer right now. I mean, the last couple of days here where I'm at in Illinois, it's been 85 plus at least last couple of days. Um, and so that begs one of the questions about the use of summer diets. Now, I know some producers utilize summer diets and some opt not to. But in your opinion, what is the science behind utilizing summer diets? And do you think it's a worthwhile formulation strategy? You know, summer diets has, is something that I think everybody should be using because clearly there are two very defined seasons um, when it uh, refers to feeding pigs, right? The hot season and the cold season. There's some uh, fall and spring are not that extreme, but then you can you can still consider hot or cold anyway. But the the only reason I agree, I said that we need to have summer diets is because when pigs get heat uh, stressed, they eat less than they should be eating to be productive. And I'm specifically talking about finisher pigs. So when you have summer diets, you help those pigs to maintain a calorie intake. And when you help them maintain calorie intake, they are, they're going to have enough energy to satisfy their needs for maintenance and for growth. So anything is related to energy, as we remember, uh, or most of us uh, probably know by now, uh, pigs eat to satisfy the energy requirements. So when they don't eat enough, nothing else works on, on, a, on a feeding program. So that's one of the reasons we should use the, the, the summer diets, increase um, the calorie intake of those pigs. And, and that's the, the main reason for the summer diets. 
Gotcha. So you mentioned increasing since there's a, well, since there's a decrease in feed intake during the summer, and we want to maintain that energy balance. Um, how do you see us increasing uh, nutritionally, increasing the energy of that diet, um, while also looking at some of the other ingredients in the diet as well, such as like protein and stuff? In order to increase the calorie uh, density of the diet that you want, we need to add fat, fats or oils, whatever is available. Um, I don't want to go to, to very, very basic things, but obviously uh, lipids have a lot more energy per unit uh, compared to carbohydrates. So lipids are going to allow you to increase the calorie uh, concentration of the diet. Now, there's a, a distinct advantage of, of the lipids compared to the carbohydrates and protein when it refers to energy production, is that they have a very small calorie increment due to digestibility and metabolism of fat. So, in very simple words, when pigs eat lipids, they get all that energy, but the, the production of heat it doesn't increase as much. So it's pretty beneficial for the pigs. Now we compare the energy concentration of the lipids with protein, for example. Clearly, lipids have more energy. And then on top of that, protein ingredient, proteic ingredients require a lot of heat production in order to be digested by the pig. That, that digestion process creates a lot of heat. And with a pig is already heat stressed, they don't want to eat something that produces more heat, internal heat. So that's one of the reasons. Uh, I know the second part of the strategy is, well, increasing en energy concentration of the diet, but you have to use a specific ingredients to keep that heat increment to the minimum so the pigs don't, don't feel even more stress because the internal heat that they are producing by digesting that uh, feed with a lot of uh, protein. Gotcha. So what has been your strategy on fat use or dietary energy density for summer diets in the past versus your current strategy, considering some of the fluctuations on fat prices lately? That's a very interesting question. And, and I'm going to start saying that is you're never going to find the perfect answer for that because the prices are always changing and not just changing in reference to their own, to their cells, changing in proportion to other ingredients. So let's say this year, right, 2025, fat is extremely expensive. Soybean meal is very, very cheap, and corn is kind of in the middle, right? So when you look at the price of fat, right now it's about more than six times the cost of corn. That makes a big difference. Uh, soybean meal, well, it's a little more expensive, but soybean meal is not even, it doesn't get to cost twice what corn costs. So with those proportions, you you will say, you know what, I'm not going to add fat because fat is extremely expensive. But my strategy in my production system is you have to add the fat no matter what the cost is. And the reason is when you work in a system that pushes pigs, you have a limited space. You can't hold your pigs for 22, 23 weeks in your finisher period. You have to send them to the plant. If you send them to the plant and they are not the right weight, there's a couple of things that are going to happen. You're, you're losing all that possibility to put weight on the pigs. You're sending less pigs less pounds to the packing plant, and you're sending a small pigs. Small pigs are not going to bring as much value as a regular 200, 300 pound pig. When you send 250, 240 pound pigs, you're gonna lose money because the cuts are different. Uh, the plant doesn't uh, produce as good quality cuts with the small pigs compared to the bigger pigs. So you're losing money with the pounds and with the value of the pig because that pig is small. So at that point, you don't have a choice. You have to add the fat regardless of the cost. You know, if you are in a system that has the possibility to keep those pigs longer, 
and you decide to keep those pigs for two, two and a half weeks longer to get to the correct weight, maybe that's a good alternative. Most of the systems in the United States are not going to have that luxury. So regardless of the cost of fat, you're going to have to add it to the diet. Gotcha. So on that, I mean, I think I might already know the answer for this next question based on what you just said about how necessary it is. But then how do you balance um, energy density and diet costs in your grow finish feed program? Is it simply just ignore that cost of the fat, whatever it is, add it? Uh, you you don't necessarily ignore it, but you know there is a point. Okay, uh, let's put it like a really quick example. If you're feeding in the winter a low energy diet, then I'm talking about a diet either devoid of fat or with the very minimum. Let's say five pounds. Yeah, the pigs are growing fine, and one of the sudden your weights start dropping. You need to start using your your summer diets. If you add 20 pounds of fat, for example, it's going to cost you, with the current current prices, about $13 per ton. Just to put 1% fat, you're going to split that in three pigs because you're going to feed a finisher pig with a ton of feet. You can feed, I'm sorry, you can feed three finisher pigs with a ton of finisher feet. So you're investing $13 per ton. That brings you to about $4.50 per pig. If you don't spend that money, you send pigs to the plant, like I said before, and then they don't give the weight, you get you don't get full price for those pigs. Every plant has a matrix. You have to hit the sweet spot to get full price for those pigs. You are outside of that spot on weight or back fat or low density. Um, or loin area, and then you don't get full price. And by not spending those four dollars, you're gonna lose twenty, thirty dollars per pig because it's not a high quality pig. And that's when you have to make your decision. If you want to go in a really, really high, uh, let's say five percent fat, a hundred pounds per ton, that's gonna cost you about twenty dollars per pig. But if that's gonna give you the possibility to get to the to get a high quality pig and get more money per pound is totally worth it. You just have to make those valuations. Sometimes you don't have a choice. You have to have those pigs in the right way because that's what the packing plant is asking for. And some some packing plants don't even take the pigs if they are not a certain way. So that's a problem. Absolutely. So then if you're feeding this summer diet, um, do you see any difference between pellets or meal form? If you're increasing the fat does it that much, does it change some of the pellet quality? Yeah, when, when you have a, uh, uh, first of all, if you have the possibility to feed pellets in the summer, go ahead and do it. I know some people doesn't like to do it because, you know, you have some uh, increased mo- uh, presence of ulcers, stomach ulcers, um, because of the pelleting. But yeah, the benefits are better, are more than the, the pigs that you're going to lose or they are not going to grow as fast because they have an ulcer. When you pellet your diets, the pigs eat more because they like the pellet more than the mash feed. On top of that, you are processing that feed and you are applying heat and moisture. You're breaking the structure of the starch and you're going to make that starch more available to the enzymes and you're going to get more energy out of that starch. So, yeah, it's a little more difficult to pellet when you use a lot of fat, but you're going to have a higher intake because of the form of the feed. You're going to add the fat and the processing or the process that goes through making the pellet is going to help you to to squeeze more energy out of your starch, which in most of the cases is going to be corn. Gotcha. And then, so final question I have for you is when looking at additives in summer diets, um, should you really change much based on what you're feeding in your winter diets or what recommendations would you have there? You know, there's a lot of additives and I think every system is going to have to to look at their own uh, production and decide what additives. There's a couple of them. Uh, Some people is using antioxidants. Some people is using betaine. One of the most popular or the most common that I, I know people use is chromium. Chromium is going to help you with uh, multiple things, but 
if we want to summarize what the chromium does, is it's going to help pigs to utilize the glucose that they are uh, producing. So it's going to help the glucose uptake in, in the cell, and that's going to help the pigs to use better the energy that they are consuming. Because to begin with, the, when pigs are in uh, stress, caloric stress, they are going through a lot of metabolic changes, and chromium is going to help them to use the glucose that they are producing despite all the metabolic challenges that they are going through because of the heat stress. Well, I appreciate your time today, Roman, for sharing all your experience with us and for coming on the show today. Well, thank you very much. It was it's always a pleasure to, to be here. Thanks for the invite and uh, good to see you again. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.